What's good, peeps? Thanks always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. All right, this news broke uh, a couple of days ago, and I forgot to do a video about it, that um, discussions are on the way, and I think they're close to announcing Danny Garcia versus Mikey Garcia in August. Um, didn't see this coming, if I'm honest with you. I thought Mikey might take a bit longer out of the ring. That, that um, Errol Spence fight was um, tough, tough to watch, right? He took a lot of shots in that fight. Um, and he made a lot of money. So I thought he might say, you know what, let's just chill out until the back end of 2019. Or let's do what a lot of other fighters have done, which is say, you know, I need a warm up. I need a gimme fight, the Kell Brook talk. But no, he's gone in there again or going in there, it looks like, with a top 147 pounder. Um, there were talks that he could go back down to 140 pounds. Um, I thought maybe the 147 guys were just too big for him. Uh, 135 was never going to happen. Obviously, he vacated these titles. Um, but 140, I thought, was more realistic. There's a couple of reasons why he's obviously stayed at 147. I think the biggest reason is that. I mean, he can fight guys that are not world champions and make a hell of a lot of money. And, I mean, he might still be chasing a world title in this division. Um, can he get a rematch with Errol Spence? No. Um, Errol Spence is fighting Sean Porter, so that rules out another belt. Terence Crawford? No, they're never going to do a deal with top rank, especially Mikey Garcia and Barbarum, not possible. So he's looking at the winner of Manny Pacquiao versus Keith Furman. That is a realistic target, right? I mean, this is all ifs and buts. He's got to get through a very, very good Danny Garcia, but he might be looking at that for that reason. So he might be looking at two things, money, obviously, and a chance for a world title at 147, which would be unbelievable when you think of the weight class he's come from. So those are the couple of reasons he's standing at 147. And I think it's... um. It's a great matchup between him and Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia, for me, is very, very underrated. I mean, he has a laser of a right hand. Nine times out of ten, when he throws that right hand, it will connect. And he's got very good boxing IQ as well. He's only lost to two guys, two world champions, Sean Porter and Keith Furman. Keith Furman, that shit was razor thin. That fight was razor, razor thin. Some people still have Danny Garcia winning that fight. I didn't. I gave it to Keith Furman, but... I mean, you could make an argument that it went to Danny Garcia. And Sean Porter, again, raised a thin decision. So he's lost to two uh, world champions, both in close fights. But, I mean, you look at the resume, he's got some good wins on there. Good wins when he wasn't a favourite. I mean, Kendall Holt back in 2011 was a good win, split decision. Amir Khan was an upset, let's not forget that. And everyone, everyone thought Lucas Matisse was going to kill him, right? And he put on a fantastic performance against Matisse. Yes, there has been some cherry picking there. I mean, I can go through everyone's career and look at cherry picking. So, look, I think he's underrated. I think um, he'll probably start, if this fight does happen, his favourite to beat Mikey. Um, just because I don't think Mikey... I think Mikey's going to take longer to grow into the weight class, right? I think all the advantages that he had at 135 and maybe even 140 are gone when he fights the big boys at 147. It really is. I mean, he looks slow. He looks ploddy, especially against Errol Spence. I know it was Errol Spence, but regardless, he looks slow against Errol. I mean, Danny Garcia is not the fast receiver, but I mean, Danny Garcia is now full-fledged 147 pounder. I mean, Danny Garcia is even talking about maybe going up to 154 pounds. I mean, he'll get destroyed up there, but don't get me wrong, he's actually talking about it. But that shows how big he is and how much he's used to carry on the extra bulk. Mikey's not used to that yet. So it might be, I don't know, two or three more fights in the future for Mikey to get there. But nonetheless, I'm happy that we are getting... Mikey in another big fight. There are 147 pounders out there, <coughs> Kel Brook, that aren't mixing it with anyone. And here we've got Mikey that's coming off a loss against Errol Spence and then goes straight in against Danny Garcia, who's coming off a good win against Granados. Um, I like this fight. Um, it does make sense, I think, for the winner to possibly face the winner of Pacquiao Furman. I know a lot of people want to see Porter and Spence winner take on Pacquiao and Furman winner, and that's be a unification. But it would be good to get a couple of other guys um, in the mix. I think Danny Garcia shouldn't be excluded from this. I think that um, he is at no worse the fifth or, or sixth best welterweight. So I don't think we should exclude him from the discussion because of two razor-thin losses. Again, though, I am surprised that Mikey's coming back. Well, we should applaud him, right? In a time when boxers, especially those fighting under the PBC banner, are taking, I don't know, one fight in 12 months. I mean, we should applaud Mikey for taking two fights against two very, very good welterweights in the space of, what, eight or nine months. So uh, congratulations to both. Fingers crossed it happens. It isn't set in stone yet, but Mike Coppinger did break it. Mike Coppinger seems to break everything. And he said this fight is nearly done. So I believe him. What do you guys think? Let me know. Peace.